The dragon typing is one of the rarest of them all, having just 62 of them currently in existence as of writing this. And just 27 of them, including 4 megas, are neither pseudo-legendary nor legendary, making them even more rare than they appear. So when we talk about a certain group of Pokemon going extinct, I think the dragons are a huge contender for a typing that has a real possibility of winding up in museums and history books. Now what do you think about all of this, Prime? I could agree with that, Collector, without a doubt. If you take a look at the museum in black and white, they have a full-on set of dragon fossils set up there. And as a matter of fact, in the Ambrett Town Fossil Lab in X and Y, they also have a dragon skull on display. So we know for sure that they definitely die, and they become worth having around as just bags of bones, which I think really does speak to how rare they are. I'd go as far as to say that, of course, Dragon-type Pokemon might be the Pokemon equivalent to real-life dinosaurs. And with that comparison to dinosaurs, I think we can get our first cataclysmic event out of the way here. Now, if you guys aren't history buffs, I'll explain it to you. Millions of years ago, dinosaurs were completely eradicated on Earth due to the impact of a massive asteroid. Now, that didn't just lead to the extinction of dinosaurs, but about 75% of all plant and animal life on the planet. But hey, they're not here now, and any descendants of theirs are birds now, so they really got screwed there. Now, if that happened in the Pokemon world, plenty of other typings would probably go extinct too, but history shows that they would at least come back, whereas the dragon typing would have to rely on fossil restoration if they even wanted to have the slimmest of chances. And I know a thing or two about fossil restoration. The dragon Pokemon atop being so very rare are also incredibly powerful. I think the important thing to bring up here with this is that they're actually so strong that it's hard to imagine any one event occurring that would wipe them out. They are a versatile typing at that. Like, Alolan Executor, for instance, is literally just a tree. It doesn't really share much of anything in common with dragons like Dragonite and Garchomp aside from the typing. So whatever would happen would have to be something so massive that there's a good chance it would actually destroy more than just the singular dragon typing. The idea of an Ice Age goes hand in hand with the idea of an asteroid perhaps rocking the planet and causing massive damage. I mean, we of course got to the actual Ice Age thanks to the asteroid in the long run, but this is the Pokemon world. An Ice Age could come from just about anything, like um, the world's ice type population went out of control. I mean, they are the ultimate threat to dragon types in most ways, since so many of them are dual typed as well, with either flying or, in Garchomp's case, ground. If a huge group of Vanillix uh, just decided they'd had enough, they could probably take out the entire species of Garchomp on their own. I think the main problem with that is thinking of what kind of event would trigger an increase in the world's ice type Pokemon population, as they are literally the rarest type of them all. So it's not unusual to think that they'd have a lower population to go along with that. But I do agree an Ice Age type event would certainly allow them to thrive and take out the dragons one by one. But I'd like to go back on that note of the typing being so strong. Clearly, it's one of the reasons why the typing is so revered, but given that strength, why aren't there far more of them? I mean, with that strength, it seems that they would be the dominant force on the planet, right? I mean, look at how many legendaries are dragon type, and the fact that only two lines of pseudo-legendaries aren't dragons is pretty telling. So why? Well, I feel the answer is pretty obvious. The dragons have probably been wiping themselves out for many, many years. I mean, up until the introduction of the fairy typing, the only thing that could hurt a dragon Pokemon were ice types and other dragon Pokemon. And even with the fairy balance we now have, that typing is even more rare than the dragons, with 100 less base stat total on average when comparing the fully evolved mons. So really, it would seem that dragons are the most dangerous thing to dragons still. You know, that's a fantastic point. Dragon-type Pokemon have been probably tearing each other up for a long time. If you think about it, the dragon typing has always been odd in general because it really felt like it was just a typing made to help counter the starters. The grass, fire, water, and electric options of Kanto would all be mostly walled by a Dragonite, with electric moves doing neutral damage, of course. So often like that for dragon types, and until Garchomp, all of them were just being neutrally damaged by the electric types. But that sort of gives you something to think about there. As time went on, Dragon-type Pokemon sort of developed even further defenses against some of the most prevalent typings, all while still suffering at the hands of the rarest. I truly wonder if a typing that has only gotten more defensively diverse as the generations have gone on can actually be completely wiped out by anything other than a world-changing event. I do, however, feel that there is one very viable thing that can be done to wipe the entire typing off the face of the planet. People feeling threatened. I think humans themselves can end up destroying dragon types out of fear, whether that be the desire of some evil team or a weird pseudo-political stance in the universe. 
I feel that, of all the types of Pokemon out there, dragons probably can cause the most immediate damage to people, and are of course one of the most difficult Pokemon to stop once they've begun rampaging. Take Drompa, for example. It has literally flattened entire villages and has burned down homes just because the kids living there were being bullies. That's horrifying, and I could see some people focusing in on the actions of this one Pokemon as an indictment on all of the dragon typing. That makes a lot of sense. We all know that humans aren't always ones to think rationally and tend to lash out because of fear, typically due to their own ignorance. So it wouldn't surprise me if something like that were to happen. It doesn't matter how kind-hearted a Dragonite is said to be when plenty of other Dragon Pokemon are said to either be fighting over territory, attacking indiscriminately and without mercy, or even throwing themselves off of cliffs in the hopes that they can one day fly. Even a weakling like Dratini is said to have uncontrollable levels of energy within them, so just imagine how the rest of them are. Now, let's bring it around back to the idea of other Pokemon taking them out, and we'll focus on the fairy typing. Though I already mentioned the strength and numbers difference between the two types, that strength isn't even super relevant for the most part, as fairies are super effective against dragons while also being completely immune to them. I also didn't really go over what kind of scenario could put the fairies ahead of the dragons either, so I'll do that now. With the fairy typing being as popular and new as it is, it's safe to assume we'll continue to get a lot more of them over the coming generations. I think it stands to say that they'll probably continue to grow in popularity not only because of how cute most of them end up being, but also because of the power they tend to have. Great to have around the house and great to have on you in a battle. It's such a perfect typing when you think about it like that. And with those factors more than likely leading to their expansion as a species, unless the dragons start coming up with a lot more poison and steel in their arsenal, they just might have a rude awakening in their near future. Well, once again, we are bringing up salient points in this video. I mean, there's obviously not a ton of poison and steel type dragons at all, so the majority of them are just at the mercy of fairy type Pokemon. I guess even Game Freak, when they introduced the fairy typing, knew they really needed to do something to knock dragons down a peg. I guess my last thought on what could end up bringing upon the end of Dragon-type Pokemon is for them to get a little too risky. What I mean by that is that uh, many Dragon-type Pokemon get the most out of their typings using moves like Draco Meteor, Outrage, or Dragon Dance. While Dragon Dance can only make a Dragon-type faster and more powerful in the context of battle as we know it, they're left open for attack while trying to do their silly dance. Outrage locks them into that move and will inevitably confuse them, and then Draco Meteor eats into their incredibly powerful special attack stat. That means that, by putting all their eggs in one basket, if dragon types were just so out of control while they were trying to fight others or defend themselves, they literally could orchestrate their own destruction. It's pretty crazy to think that uh, they could be so strong, but their actual strength can have such drawbacks to it that it could serve as the architecture of demise. Isn't that wild? Oh, it is! So I think we can now bring it to the main question we want to answer. Is it actually possible for the dragon typing to go extinct? Well, simply put, I think the answer is yes. Maybe not in the real grandiose ways that we talk about with ice ages and asteroids wiping nearly everything out, but the dragon typing causing their own demise with the fairy typing bandwagoning off of that? Yeah, it's easy to picture that happening. Honestly, if the dragon type wants to get ahead of the curve, they should probably listen to Lit, as figuring out who your worst enemy is would be extremely helpful. I agree with you. I think we're on the same page here. Dragon types could very well go extinct. I think they'll end up killing each other off, but don't forget about this. It takes a lot to get a dragon type Pokemon to become fully evolved, so it wouldn't be that hard to imagine that when a Drampa gets angry and starts thrashing about, it could, like, destroy an entire colony of Bagon or something. There's a lot that goes into becoming an unstoppable, powerful dragon type Pokemon, and I think that it'll be easy for an unevolved dragon type to be killed off as the fully evolved ones brawl with each other. It's just the most likely outcome, I believe, and it's honestly feasible that one day we really could see a region with no dragons, perhaps even an entire Pokemon world, due to just how much they hurt themselves. Well, there you have it, everyone. After just two videos in this series, we've got one on each side of the board. Electric types aren't going anywhere anytime soon, and dragons seemingly have one foot out the door already. I wonder how this will look when everything is said and done. What do you think with all of that insider knowledge you have, Prime? Well, I can break it down like this. There probably aren't going to be any Pokemon that go extinct that are lucky enough to be like those of my kind, which can be revived, because we're quite literally built different. I've been working out lately, by the way, building some brain muscle so it's not as itchy. My powerful brain tells me this much. We're not going to see too many Pokemon that end up being able to go extinct, in my opinion. Ugh, the words you say disgust me. But you're probably right. 
I'd say with how powerful Pokemon are in general, we'd probably be looking at maybe a third at most perishing over time. But what do you think? Well, I uh, kind of already told you what I think. Not but... you, them, our dear viewers. Do you think our reasoning here today was sound or are we just a couple of wild and crazy guys? Be sure to let us know in the comment section below. But until next time, I'm Collector Dexter. And I am the Prime Directive. And we'll see you all next time.